Greetings! I'm George from Pavlicek Studios. I'll make some glass today, and of course, it's going to be a mark. And today we're going to make a um, an Art Deco style flower marble. It'll be three dimensional, but it will be minimal in colors with high tra contrast background. Um, red, classic Art Deco. I uh, could go white. No, I'll go red. And then uh, we're going to draw um, the background uh, to reflect the flower in front. So what I need to do is I need to make myself something to draw the flower with. And that is going to be a cased red cane with a thin layer of black over it to give it uh, some contrast when it appears next to the other. We could use a twisted cane on that too, which also looks nice. Um, but let's go with, with a super minimal look of the black cased red cane. So let me grab my eyewear. This is uh, helping me to see without the sodium flare from the glass. And there's some filter like that on my camera. So you are also missing out on that lovely bright <laughs> yellow ball that would obscure you seeing anything I'm doing. So. It's still cool to watch, even if you can't quite see exactly what's going on there, but you'll be able to because filter. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> All right, here is torch going. A large glass rod. Let me grab that. Okay. Oh. This one here. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, I've got the red for doing the petals, the black for doing the stamen, and the green for doing the petioles. Um, so let's just get a red rod, another red rod, and we'll make a quick gather. Get a, get a metal handle on that, and we'll just do some swipe gathers with black, pull the stringer, and that's what we'll do our art with as, as the final um, decoration on the marble, the marble's backside. You'll see a lot of people doing flowers, and they do these flowers, but it's just the flower, and it's floating. There's no background. There's no anything. It's just plain. I like to make a composed marble with the front and the back, at least these days, and so that's what I'm doing. If I make a floating flower, you know, you have to clean up the back end of the flower, uh, which is fine, but it seems like you're only doing half of the job. But I guess the magic of glass is that it's going to look cool whatever way you decide to do it. And some people like to see what's on the back of the flower. It's like you're a ghost bee looking at the <laughs> That's crazy talk! Alright, so I've got to gather red. And I'm going to melt off this rod from my gather. There we go. Let's uh, give it a gentle shaping with a paddle. And I've got, this is a graphite paddle. I've got a graphite marver plate, which is basically just a big uh, piece, about one square foot, that I use to shape the glass on without setting everything on fire because this is super hot. <laughs> so I'm gonna just make it a little more even cylinder and flatten the end. I'll show you that in just a second. There. We've reshaped it into a cylinder. Flatten the end. Then we get a metal rod on there. Um, we could call it a handle. It's a stainless steel rod. We could call it a punchy. We like to fancy. 
or if we were speaking in Italian. But we're not. Fancy or Italian. So let's call it a handle. And I'm detaching this rod from my gather, which is going to be a cylinder. This is, I start several marbles this way. This is the torch work way. Oh, that's getting away from me. Too much talking. Pay attention. Ah! <laughs> so, let's improve that cylinder shape. A little uh, over ambitious there. I keep squishing it a little flat. This is good enough. Now I just want to get a, um, a clear, I mean, a black. A thin layer over this. So I'm going to do a series of swipe gathers. Very, very thin. So I want this gather, tiny black gather, to be hot. So that when I swipe along, it's going to just give a little layer of black. It's a great way to bulk out your glass composition uh, repertoire. You know, you can draw on glass. It's kind of like, you know, threading the needle with a pogo stick, but with practice, you can do it. Any uh, glass work you do, well, any art, you know, it all starts off as a dot or a line. What you do with that dot and line is a big, big difference. If you disagree with me and you don't think it all starts with a dot or a line, then keep it to yourself because I'm talking right now. <laughs> I know that's not always true. There's exceptions. For glass and guideline. You know, do it your way, I do it my way. Both ways are neat. Pretty cool. So, metal handle on this side. I'm going to attach one on this side. I've got my red gather. And uh, that's a technical term. Talk about that later. Now I'm going to heat this whole thing up and pull it into a thread of one millimeter, and that's what I'm going to draw my last flower with. So we're heating it up, getting all the heat even. You see, and then when I start pulling it, this is going to be pretty long, so I'm going to have to stand up. I have to probably go a little bit out of frame. Let's get a lot of it in there. Pull it. Down. It's ready to pull. Whoa. It's fun. It's hot. It's dangerous. I love it. Here we go. Uh, some of it's frozen and it's really too big. Okay. Let's melt this one off. And see that solidifies a little bit cool. That's all right. Now this is long, so let's chop it in half. Flame. This one side. Don't touch me. Don't burn me. Give your grip. All right. Now I'm gonna heat the end of my punky here, just so that the glass pops off. I'm gonna dump it in the water. This end is a mess. You can see on the end there's the red, which wasn't cased in the black, and then here the black is starting to get cased on there. Whoa. I'm going to set that aside, and that will be a nice dark red if I decide to mix that later. All right, now these are, let's look at them. So you can see, they look pretty cool. Alright, pull and touch 
so red on this other end, and it starts getting blacker on the other side. So there's just a little thin layer of black over the red. It's going to make for great drawing on the black background later, because the, the uh, red will float, but yet be divided. So I could put two, lay two lines right next to each other, and there'll be a black dividing line because of that layer. That That's amazing. I know. It's going to be really cool. I'm just cleaning up the ends here. This is the end I want to use. Let's save that for later. I don't know what I'm going to do with I'll do something. <laughs> All right. Let's get going on our actual marble. Big rod. Cut end. Super weird. A ground end. Someone was feeling sensitive at the glass shipping department. You should just chop those or use a tile thing and break them, and then they're sharp on the end. On smaller rods, you cut them, and you're, most of the time you don't really get like the little razor sticking out. But on those big rods, it's very easy to get a razor that you could easily cut yourself on. So I can see why they might want to just zip those ends on the grinder, but that means that I have to peel this end because there's going to be all kinds of crap on there. Can we focus on that? Focus. <laughs> Basically, it's a lot of uh, fluffy looking uh, white very minuscule foam bubbles. Just going to grab that whole thing off of there. We can see if there's any other weirdness. This rod is not in the best shape. But we're going to have to make do. A lot of scratches on the surface translate into bubbles in my uh, design later. What this is can be a flower, it's going to be a an inside-out flower or an implosion flower. Um, and so I'm going to get a large clear gather, flatten it, I'll make my flower as normal. Um, I'm using like minimal colors. Then I'm going to put on a background. The background I'm going to make a little bit bigger than I normally do because I want it to be have a deco, art deco look. And then on the back of that black background, which is going to be bigger, I'll do this that minimalist red flower. So it's like more to it, but less color. Simpler design. Bigger, but simpler something. We'll see how it looks. I just did one. That's cool. <laughs> I was been making, there's, I did like four marbles before this, um, just because I haven't been able to do marbles the past couple of weeks because it's all kinds of other work you got to do sometimes that's not as fun, but necessary. All right, my gather is coming along. Get it in the magnifying glass. Oh my god, it's huge! It's bigger than the diameter of the rod. I want to get a little bit bigger. I can make this bigger and bigger by just angling the rods back slightly so when I'm rotating it, it's sort of rolling back onto the rod a little bit. But surface tension's also wanting to pull it into the rod. So I'm going to squish it, I'm going to flatten it through gravity by holding it down on the marble end, but I'm also going to squish it from the top, making my disc bigger if I can. Then I'll have a little more room to draw my flower. I draw it two-dimensionally like a cross-section of a flower, and then I will turn it kind of inside out. Let's watch and find out. 
<laughs> Alright, so, gather, down on the marble plate, pushing down a little bit as I turn it around to even it up. There is my disc. Now we're going to put some little black stamen in the middle. Those little pokey parts in the middle of the flower. Five little stamens. Now, let's do the petals. And since I've made this cool cane with the black uh, stripe, or black case, let's make the petals out of that. We can make a smooth petal. We can make a pointy petal. I'm going to make a pointy petal. I've made the first layer of petals. They're like little slugs. Lay out the next concentric circle. There we go. I'm going to do another circle that goes from the center of that out. Third layer. Give it some three dimensional, some interwoven look. It's a shape. <laughs> Let's do one more. The petals. I'm having a good time today making one of this. It's nice when you get to do the thing that you really want. So many days you have to do the things to support what you really want to do. Equipment work a lot of time organizing in the shop for spring. Also nice. All right, so melting those petals in. I'm going to start heating them up and giving them a little poke one at a time. Two at a time this time. And the secret to getting good petals is to not poke all the way through. You're just getting them started. You don't want to... You're not really shaping the petal here. You're just shaping that leading edge at the most tip, the tip most end. I'm glad I clarified that. <laughs> I almost have all of these poked in. This is going very nice. So, I like to brace my uh, the large rod I'm working on on the torch, and then I just come in with the pick and make my little indents. Um, you could do it free if you like. Um, I like to anchor at one end um, just for steadiness. It actually makes it go a little bit quicker and when you do it consistently uh, you can uh, get yourself a little uh, rhythm and some speed up. And uh, getting, getting a rhythm and trying to go as fast as you can as the glass will allow once you're confident in your motion lets you add more steps, more details, more uh, complexity to your design as you go. And that's when you can really start, when you're not thinking about that all, each individual step, and bringing all those things together. That's when you really can get creative and turn your craft into art. That design is coming out of you semi-unconsciously. You know where you want to get, and you've done all the intermediary steps a million times, maybe hundreds of times. And they're just coming out um, 
you know, as you need them without having to focus so hard on each individual soil. So I've melted those in and I've done something. Pick the soil, George. There it is in the magnification. It is out of magnification. I'm going to cup it, which means I'm holding it down. I'm heating around the edge, and it's starting to go from flat down to cup. Back. As it cups, the glass from the outside of the disc is coming around to the front of the disc. Then I'm going to push it flat again. And start the process over. So, here I'm holding it down. It's starting to cup flat. Then, I'm, then I go to the marble plate, push it flat again. So, done it a couple times now, and that design has started to contract on my disc because I brought the glass around and pushed this up in. In fact, you can probably see from the side that that flower is starting to bloom little pointed petals way at this end of the disc. Let's get that heat back going. And now I'm going to get some green and make the petioles. Ah, my first bug bothering me here. That is something I don't miss about working glass in the summer. Having the bugs chase after your flame. <laughs> get roasted right in your face. Fireworks. Alright. I'm going to add patty oils. I'm just going to add you. Because I want this to be minimal. I'm going to do two sets. Two. Also known as four. <laughs> and now let's melt those in and we'll start cupping the next one. We'll cup and push probably 10 times to get this thing really uh, turning inside out. Let's see what it looks like. All hot, so you can't see which color is which. I don't want to let it get cold just to show you the color because um, it's slow way down. a nice cup and push, and that brought our petioles into the disc. Now we're going to start turning those petioles in, inside out along with the petals and the stamen. The stamen actually are, stay straight, they just get moved up. We just have to repeat the process a bunch of times to keep the heat where you like it for where you're, how you're doing the inside out technique. It depends on what kind of glass you're using, um, what, how heavy your design is, what your angle is, how high your, how high your torch is up. And uh, everyone's technique will vary a little bit, which is great. So you can, uh, you can almost tell whose flower it is by the amount of bend in the petals, etc. Or maybe you can't, I don't know. I can tell mine from other people's. find the stiffer glass, um, a lot of the flowers, um, they'll bend to a certain level and then they'll stop um, just because that the glass works a little slower. I think you could probably push past that. Um, 
and I'm sure people do. I haven't seen it. That was a very esoteric comment. I wonder if anyone will understand what I'm saying. I don't think so. That was more creepy than anything else. What do you think? <laughs> I am turning this flower inside out like crazy. See? Mm, can you see? Oh, it's too hot. Let's keep it going. It's really blooming out, though. That slowed it down. Sometimes slowing it down is nice. If you get it going, it's going too too fast. You'll start um, getting a, it'll get away from you, and you won't be able to cause certain areas that are bending or uh, see what you're doing even because everything is orange and you lose sight of your contrast between your petals and your background bonus. If you're doing it, if you're repeating a design, a lot of times you can start speeding up to the point where you're not seeing everything that's going on because you know what's going on from feel. I like to take a little step back to make sure things are going the way I want them to go. Okay. I think that's bloomed as high as I want to get it. in the background on it. And here normally I might sprinkle a little uh, color and hints of flowers in the background, you know, blurry, out of focus. Um, but in this one, since I want to do an art deco kind of design, I want the background to be stark. So I'm going to do just black. And there is... <laughs> Bar flexing got back from a run. <laughs> hey, Barbara, are you still here? No, she's not. I was going to ask her to do something. <laughs> That's fine. All right, so first gather of black, part of the background. Put it on there. I'm just going to flatten it a little bit. Sound effects are important. I'm going to put one more gather of black on there. It's going to lift the whole flower up in the, in the surface of the marble. I like that. I guess everyone else hates that, so whatever. That's the way I like it. <laughs> Getting my next little black. That side. I'm gonna squish it like that. And as I squish it, I'm just recentering that gather. And now I'm gonna bring it in to the surface of uh, this would-be sphere and uh, get get the free end of this model a little more spherical. And so I'm gonna I'm, I was keeping it up here as I was cupping and pushing. Now I'm gonna keep it level. flower is looking good. I think I like the amount of glass I've added for the background. Adds a little bit of volume to push that flower forward and uh, gives a little more balance front to back, which I like. It's something that I like to mess around with. But since most people are not doing the backgrounds on their flowers, they're all floating, this uh, may not be a thing that you are interested in, so just ignore that. And I'm going to paint on the background with that rod that I made at the beginning of this demonstration. So 
So, I've improved the sphericalness of this. See? But, let's look at it in the magnifying glass. We still see a line, separation line between the black and the clear. Let's get that improved a little more. Get another heat. Get another run through the marble mold. So get that valley between the black and the clear to disappear. You don't want to push that closed, you want to let it close. Push adjacent to it, and the surface ahead will tighten up. But for the most part, surface tension, heat, rotation. That's doing it. You can see it's closing up already. Let's keep that going. When my heat starts to get too high, and I'm ready to back it off. Um, that's really going to start wanting to pull in, and then I'll give it. I'll do it a little smooch in the, uh, the marble mold to so finish up my improvement in the sphere. Then I can start decorating. All right. So we got it. There is the black. That's going to be my canvas for the back of the marble. There's my flower. And then if you look at it this way, you can see there's going to be red on that black back. It'll be nice. We'll see. All right. Here's my cased red. Turn the flame down a little bit. I like to have a, a pointy pencil of a flame when I start drawing my flower. Draw in a couple of parts. Right, that's the back of the flower. Put it in the middle. Here, just a little. You know, we're not going to be able to see that because uh, the red looks black when it's hot and the black looks black. So this is, I'm going just by texture right now. And when you're first learning to do a design, do it in high contrast colors black and white or, you know, clear and opaque, something that's going to give you a really nice uh, differentiation, a line where you can see what you're doing. And uh, if you really want like a density line or heat differential line, then go from opaque to clear and you'll really see it because those are hard to get to sit next to each other uh, nicely and smoothly. Now, I'm just putting on green petals. Give that a little um, orientation. Otherwise, I think if you just did the flower without the petioles sh showing you the direction it's coming out, uh, you might be too vague, too nebulous of a design. You might not understand what you're seeing. So this is really, that's finishing it up. Um, sometimes I'll put a border around my background, and there's a couple of ways I like to do that. We'll, we'll talk about that today. Put the flowers drawn in there. You can kind of see uh, uh, the lens. The, uh, it's not as high contrast as in real life. So. I'm just heating it all in together. I want to heat it most so it starts to draw in and then push it flat. If you heat it all the way till it draws, you're going to blur your design. If you push your design all in, you're going to change its shape. So the balance is heat it till it starts to suck in to the back surface and then push it the rest of the way. So as you push it, you're chilling the surface. You push it, it meets the back surface. It's all 
uh, the temperature has fallen and the surface has solidified, that locks in your design uh, unless you get in there and start messing with it. Or you overheat it again. When you overheat the glass, those the chemicals in the two colors will start uh, crossing the lines between them and blur that line. Those metal oxides in the glass. Now I'm just improving my spherical shape a little bit more. And now, since I've drawn a flower on this end, I don't know if you can see it. Let's see. You can see where the petioles are. You can't see the petals themselves. But I need to detach this large clear rod from the rest of my marble. I don't want to put this metal punty into my flower design, so I'm going to put it off set. And then I'm going to heat the large clear rod until it separates from my model. And I'll straighten out this metal handle that's crooked later. So sometimes being, you got to be a little off kilter sometimes. Um, more to protect the design or mess with people that watch you. Why is he doing it crooked? Why is he doing it crooked? <laughs> All right, we got that off. See, it's still off balance. But I'm going to leave it off balance a little more. I got to take off this clear on the end. There's, I know there's some bubbles in there that I'm going to get, and there's just too much clear on there. If I try to push that back into the sphere, it's going to mess up my change the shape of my flower still by dealing with the clear on the end. That's a whole nother box of ants. Now I can straighten out that empty. And now we are balanced. See how the, the flower is not on the axis? We don't care. Now we're just going to get it spherical. And it's done. Some of the marble's cold, some of it's hot. So let's even it up. Let the heat do some of our work. Let go on the mold to do the rest. My hemispherical different sizes of molds that I use to make marbles my rough shaping in a hemisphere that's larger than the marble. And then I go to a smaller hemisphere where I'm just using the rim to get really spherical. I could change the axis of rotation. As I turn, that, the rim of that hemisphere is really Improving the sphericalness of the model. We got really close. See some ripples on the surface. The graphite imparts ripples from chilling the surface faster than the underlying plants. So the molten underside still pushing, even though the part that's touching the graphite has chilled solid part that's still molten behind the area that's touching the graphite is pushing like a wave and then that gets chilled and that's what causes the ripples. Ask Dr. Science! <laughs> Whatever. Wiggly. I'm just giving it one more little pass. Graphite, not too long. I don't take too much heat out of the marble. I'm going to give it a pass in my cherry wood molds. Cherry wood molds. Piece of cherry wood. Go figure. Holes drilled in it. 
with its water on. And just use the rim that for a few seconds, each one. Finalize our spherical mess on this unattached side. Chilling the surface down into the marble. Making it nice round and smooth. Inside there's a flower. Can't see a lot of detail because it's since it's red, it's looking black. It won't the color won't actually resolve to red until it's almost down under 500 degrees, maybe less. Now I'm going to get a little glass punty that I've formed to a pencil point already. And heat that surface of the marble to just the right temperature. Heat the pencil point to just the right temperature. Get them to touch. And then we can detach this metal handle, which was only touching the background, and I tried to keep it from moving around, so I preserved my flower detail. Very excited to find out how that worked. I haven't done that in a while. But I, do, I like drawing those flowers two-dimensionally. Before I started doing more 3D flowers, back in the late 90s when I was starting to do flowers, I would do them two-dimensionally on a, on a flat surface and then put clear over top, and that was my flower marble. I did make a lot of those, probably, you know, maybe a hundred or so back in the day. Mostly making Squirrel type marbles, or eyeball marbles, you know, the basics. Alright, this metal is round, looking smooth. I'm going to give this unattached side a pass in my marble mold, my cherry wood marble mold. And now, I'm just going to chill that area, that last attachment point. And, uh, it's not quite a fiber blanket, it's, it's like a tile made out of compressed fiber blanket. I tapped off that last attachment point, I chilled it right there, and then cracked off. And now I'm going to take this and heat that last little nub until it gets smooth. done a good job with that punchy attachment point. There shouldn't be too much to smooth out, and there isn't. And I always try to make sure that last punty, that last little glass rod is clean so that I'm not leaving stuff attached to that glass surface. And it looks like I did a pretty good job. Now I'm heating up a little tweezer, heating it up to just orange, and I'm going to let it go to black. Get down to about 950, and I'll pick up my marble. As it looks like a black flower on a black background, it'll, it'll really pop once it hits room temperature. Red Art Deco flower on a black background. And put it in the annealing oven. All right, that's a smaller marble, so that needs to take stand the annealer for at least an hour, though. And then the uh, temperature I will ramp down over another, probably in 45 minute increments, down by thirds. Um, I have a whole schedule. Um, it's not very interesting. Marble making is. And thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week, and I will post that marble pictures of that marble tomorrow. All right, see ya.